Welcome back to the Horse Racing Show. I'm Kenny Rice. Thank you for tuning in today on your iPad or Google Play or watching and listening to us on YouTube or Facebook. We appreciate everything and always enjoy the feedback. This is a dear friend of mine. We go back to the days, the burgeoning days of horse racing on ESPN with Today at the Races. And she went on to a 22-year career with uh, ESPN, horse racing, college football, and basketball. She is Janine Edwards. Hello, Janine. Kenny, this is such a treat. What an, what an awesome walk down memory lane we're going to take, huh? Oh, I tell you, <laughs> we, we had some fun, didn't we? You know, and that was such a cutting-edge show. I was really proud of the show because I tell yeah. people now, you know, they, TVG didn't exist. HRTV was not even thought about. You watch right. that show for a live race. If you weren't at uh, off-track betting, you didn't see a live race except our show. Exactly. And it was fast moving and we took you to different parts of the country and we always had, you know, big races with big horses and and you always made it fun. We had a lot of laughs behind the scenes and in front of the camera. And uh, it was just it was just good times. And that's sort of how I cut my teeth on television. And I I tell everyone that, gosh, Kenny Rice and Al Jerkins and you guys that I worked with on that show back then, um, you really put up with a lot for somebody who knew nothing about television at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but just, I but, was a newbie. I was really, wow. I cringe when I watched some of those tapes. Oh yeah. But you knew about the, you knew about horse racing. And to me, that's the key. Do you know what is going yeah. on in the, whatever sports you're covering and, and you knew horse right. racing. And, and, you know, I think too, that sometimes people, uh, obviously we prepare, but you know what I'm saying? They can over prepare and worry too much about being on TV instead of being right. in the moment of watching the race and talking about what they see. And right. you do that and, so well. Well, thank you. And so do you. And I think, you know, what made it fun was that it was such a fast moves, moving show. And, um, you know, we kind of had to fly by the seat of our pants <laughs> a lot of times and it, it just, kept it interesting we were always kind of on the edge of our seats um but it, it was great times and i think i mean that show ran for several years if i'm not mistaken i mean you know was, i, I should have looked this up i'm not sure when the last one we did it was like 97 to about maybe like oh four about seven years does that sound yeah, right somewhere it, in that, that ballpark about, i was gonna say about five or six years but seven might be right i might i might yeah, I, mean, I might have overshot the runway on that way it was only five or six <laughs> You know, at times okay. it seemed like it was 10 or 12 years, but most of the time it, we had fun and it zipped by. And uh, I mean, we had to call a couple of races because the, the remember the, the audio didn't come from the track. Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. You just reminded me of that. That's hilarious. Yeah. There were, there were literally times when, you know, we weren't getting the feed or I do remember that when we didn't get the audio and you and I, especially you had to kind of talk, take us through the race and, then there were a couple of races where the it was foggy and the announcer couldn't even see and you and I are like what are we, I don't what do we say here I don't know <laughs> but you know we always had fun then we'd go unwind at next door at the double tree there in Tulsa which was our home away from home and they always took good care of us and uh it was it was fun times it really was you made it so easy for me and I look back on those years very fondly they went by fast, but you know, things that you enjoy do. Uh, that's what I've noticed over the years and looking yes. at both of us and uh, you're retired now, although you're still yeah. busy as ever, but, but you went on to do football and basketball and you know, you branched out into other sports and had a, had an outstanding yeah. career. Well, you're very kind. I mean, it was, it was nice of ESPN to take a chance on me and uh, they gave me wonderful opportunities to branch out, you know, I of course kept doing horse racing and uh, you know, you and I, you did NBC as you still do now so beautifully um, with the NBC crew with all the horse racing and, but we worked, you know, on ESPN for a long time yeah. doing those remote racing shows together and they were so fun. And, um, and then I was given a, a wonderful chance to uh, get into college basketball and college football and some other things for ESPN and it's just, it's, it was a wonderful career. I am married to a football coach and I sit around <laughs> on Saturdays now and I watch football from sun up till sundown and I never get tired of it. We're talking with Janine Edwards. And of course, uh, we go back to horse racing days on ESPN. Uh, many of you also know her from football and basketball and look at you. You are just a college football maven. Now you just, 
You know, all this college football, you married a college football coach. Uh, you're in Florida. Oh, so uh, it's funny. It, it's funny. I'm, I'm saying to Glenn, my husband, I'm like, um, do you realize that they have you guys an 11 point favorite this week? And he's like, are you gambling now? <laughs> And I'm like, no, honey, I just like to see what people think of your team. And, you know, and I'm keeping track of all the matchups. And I can't wait to see Oklahoma play Texas this weekend. That is the matchup of the week, in my opinion. Of course, you also have Florida at LSU. But, I mean, it, there's some big games this weekend. So I know where I'll be. I'm going to be watching football most of the day. Then I'm going to head to FAU, where my husband is. And I'm going to watch them play Middle Tennessee. And uh, then I'll get home hopefully in time for the, some of the night games. Look, look at you. It's, this is like having <laughs> Danny Sheridan on right now. It's like Brent Musburger's on with us. Look at you rolling down, laying oh, the 11. I don't know. I'm going to take the 11. It's I don't know. Funny. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I think it might be more like nine or 10, but um, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're playing well. They're coming off a bye. So we shall see. And he's happens. with Lane Kiffin, right? That's Lane Kiffin. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's with Lane Kiffin, yeah. And it, Lane's dad, Monty Kiffin, is a defensive analyst, and Glenn is, is the co defensive coordinator. He's having a great time having Monty around. He just loves picking his brain, and so he's he's having a good time. Now, d let me pick your brain about the state of horse racing as we know it now, because the last time I saw you was at the Belmont Stakes this year, so I know you're yep. still around the sport. You keep up with it. Uh, yep. I don't know if we've, we'll ever see a year like we've seen this year, Janine, in horse racing. Crazy. No, it was crazy. Everything from the Derby um, and that crazy outcome, which I have to say, I really felt for the stewards in that, in yeah. that instance, didn't you? I mean, oh, yeah. they were kind of in a no-win situation. I, th um, I thought they made the right call. Uh, yes. But, but yeah, because I guarantee that, ha and I said this on the air before, I guarantee half the people left Churchill Downs still not understanding why Country House won the race or was declared the winner. Right, uh, right, You know, it's just, right. a, it was a thing. And, and, you know, and then some of the old school guys will say, well, the Derby's always a rough race. You can go back right. and, and break down every section of it and somebody cut off with somebody or moved into somebody's path. And oh, exactly. for the most part, that's probably true. Let's face it, it's crazy, 2018, 20 it's horses. It's a stampede. Yeah, yeah it's it a is. stampede every year. But I thought this was so, uh, you know, flagrant. Uh, that that was it. But when I went over to interview Bill Mott, because he's standing there and we're waiting on the results, I thought he made the good point. If this is a middle of the week race, you know, it, the horse is taken down. There's no question. But obviously right. with and the nobody magnitude. Yeah. Nobody would have blinked an eye. The magnitude was tremendous. It was unprecedented. It was a shame for the sport. I feel bad for the connections of maximum security. Absolutely. I felt I said it at the time, I, I felt bad for the stewards having yeah. to be in that position. I do think there could have been a little bit better communication all the way around yeah. as to what went into their decision. And, of course, when you're at the track with 150,000 people, the PA system, maybe you can't hear. Things are not being explained to you. So people were kind of confused. But um, I do think it was the right decision. Uh, I don't know that it, it could have been maybe just handled a tiny bit better, but it was a no-win situation. So now – do you have a do you have a looking back on all the races? And I know there's way too many that we, you and I both covered way and you more you know, you know and people ask me do you have a favorite moment? Well, you know, American mm. Pharaoh winning the Triple Crown and me interviewing Bob Baffert right after. I oh. mean, you, you know, that's just How do you that's top that? a, Yeah, to me that's hard to top. even when he won it again with Justify. Uh, yeah, I know. You know that, I, I mean, that. And, and I don't want to like, downplay wow, it. it. How yeah. do you top it? But yeah. he topped it. <laughs> and, and to be there, so, you know, that kind of stands out. But, you know, there are moments and, and races and, that we've seen over the years, uh, uh, you know, that, that stand out uh, for the, the uniqueness of it all. Uh, whatever's Giacomo. Or emotional connection or something, you know. Yeah, like, you know. Some, uh, just something you go, wow, that's, yeah. that was interesting. Uh, you know, that was, that was interesting. It was a fun thing to be at, even though maybe it won't like our Kong winning the, winning the Breeders Cup classic and nobody, you know, Fob wasn't speaking English to anyone trying to interview <laughs> him. You know, that was some fun times. I don't know if you have any like moments that really stand out that you just had some fun with, even if they may not oh, be as gosh. historic. Well, oh, absolutely. I mean, when you, when you're, you just reminded me of something like, Okay, um, and her name escapes me. The filly that won on the turf, the French filly, when the, the groom was running down the track, oh, yeah. running with the horses as they're running down the stretch. stretch. Oh, gosh. 
Yes. Gosh, I can't remember her name. Anyway, that uh, that to me is etched in my mind as one of the most endearing moments yeah. that I have seen in racing. And then, of course, you have moments, uh, uh, events like Barbaro, you know, winning the yeah. Derby and then breaking down in the Preakness and that whole aftermath. That was a, you know, that was just a gut wrenching thing for me to cover. And I got to cover it quite a bit because I lived in the area and uh, Zenyatta winning the Breeders' oh. Cup out there, Santa Anita. I will never forget that moment when she came roaring down the stretch and just the aftermath and the roar of the crowd was deafening, absolutely deafening. Um, but I'm with you in all those years of covering horse racing, and there have been so many memorable moments or quirky moments or upsetting moments or endearing moments. But to kind of close out my career and to be able to cover a Triple Crown winner in yeah. American Pharaoh was really the icing on the cake. It was a long time coming, and boy, was it worth it. Yeah, I, you know, because I was really beginning to wonder. Although going into that race, I honestly felt he was going to win it. Now, I will say yes. I had the same feeling with Silver Charm and Smarty Jones, and I was wrong. But I really <laughs> thought – I didn't have it with everyone. Yeah. I, I didn't yeah. have it with everyone. But uh, I, I did I did with this horse. But again, like I said, I yeah. thought Silver Charm was going to win. And I mm -hmm. thought Smarty Jones was going to win the Triple Crown. So, yeah, to still be. I did, too. You know, I mean, look yep. at us to stay around and do it. You know, look at all the near misses we covered, which I think is pretty cool, the fact that we were there for that because the anticipation. You know, I remember Funny Side when they let the crowd in. Remember at Belmont and the people are running in when they first opened the gate? That's before they capped it off at 90,000. I forgot they had yes. 120 or something. I mean, yes. that was like rock concert stuff. I really enjoyed exactly. that. Exactly. Exactly. And, of course, Saratoga, Travers Day every year. You you cannot beat that atmosphere. Right. I mean, that is one of my all-time favorite things to be at, whether you're working or just going as a fan. You you just you'd like to bottle that electricity and that atmosphere and just take it with you everywhere you go. I wish every racetrack and every racing fan could experience what that feels like. Yeah. Or just to be there on Breeders' Cup Day or part of the Kentucky Derby. I mean, those are the moments that just really fill you with excitement and tug at your heartstrings and make racing so special. Talking with Janine Edwards, who had a 22 year career with ESPN, Glenn Spencer, her husband now coaching, well, still coaching, and you're a coach's wife, and you could talk all about college football and FIU. Can't believe FIU. I'm a coach's wife. Can you believe Look it? Look at you. You, you, you don't paint your face or anything when you go to the game, do you? <laughs> No, but you know, I have been known to, and this is so silly, I have been known to just out of sheer frustration and rage while yeah. I'm watching one of my husband's games, send him a text <laughs> at like halftime, and I'm like, I know he's not going to look at his phone, you know, and I'm like, why aren't you blitzing more? You've got to get more pressure on the quarterback, or, you know, and I'm like screaming into my phone, and then I send it, and then I'm like, why did I just do that? Now, now would Glenn have sent you a text saying, you know, you should have asked Baffert or Lucas this question, Janine. Does never. he ever see? see? No, never. He's a Southern gentleman yeah, from he's a Georgia, great guy. and he would never. <laughs> <laughs> he would never, you know, this is the New Jersey native in me coming out. I know. That, you know, I have a big mouth. <laughs> well, well now, you know, you, you've covered the big events in football, too. Is is there a football, like a stadium, you know, because uh, covering SEC for several years uh, on and off when, you know, covering the Kentucky program, which, yeah. you know, unfortunately yep. has gotten some better under Mark Stoops. But we yeah. would go on the road and, you know, and go to Alabama and go to LSU and go to Tennessee and Florida. Right. Uh, you know, I tell people, especially my friends that live in the Northeast, uh, you know, Southern college football uh, oh, and Southwest like college football. You know, you go, I've been, I've been to Bedlam. I went to Oklahoma, Oklahoma state one time with oh, Sean Sutton great. when he was oh, assistant coach at Oklahoma basketball. We went there and you know, that phenomenal. was, that was crazy. Um, uh, it is crazy. It is crazy. And uh, you have to experience SEC football, to really understand it is a culture. It is a yeah. lifestyle. I mean, you pull up, you know, in Tuscaloosa there, Alabama or Clemson or LSU or any of these places, there will be hundreds of motorhomes and, and RVs parked for a couple of days before the game. And these people are coming from all over the country to come to these games they must all be retired. I don't know what they're, you know, I don't know what I know they do people for a living. That, I know people that have their vacations 
schedule Around during football. a football season. Like, you know, they, they, you they, if they got two weeks, they'll spread it out over, you know, three days here, two days here, wherever the closest oh. road. Yeah. And, and yeah. they do. And it, I don't get it. But I really love college football and college basketball, as you know. Yeah, I and, know you love basketball. You know, definitely. I really and uh, so I can kind of get it to a point, although I don't want to take a vacation day to go watch it. You know, <laughs> well, I'll no, slide it in people, when I can on the road, you know. But oh, right now, these people, it's a religion and it, it is really something to see. Now, one of my favorite places ever to work games is Clemson because the atmosphere is just electric and yeah. deafening and i covered them through the whole rise right along with Dabo sweeney coming in and just little by little that program getting better and better and it kind of really started with them winning that chick-fil-a bowl down there in atlanta several right. years ago that when they beat lsu in that game nobody really saw them as an up-and-comer and that put them on the map and they have not looked back since they are just amazing and he's doing it the right way i love Dabo sweeney great guy you know horse racing needs to incorporate some of these guys in bring them over yes and, and there's yes. actually a horse named Dabo right now that i'm only <laughs> i'm only familiar with this because mike battaglia and chris collinsworth are part owners and Get i think out. tom hammond's in on this Get out! And, and they bought the horse and the horse was already named Dabo. And I don't know if How Dabo Sweeney know that? That, that the horse was named for him or not, but I think he has found out from what I understand. Well, if the, if anybody <laughs> would the, love to spend a day at the races and hang out and have fun watching this horse run, it would be Dabo Sweeney. I, I think so. You know, I, I actually mentioned it, not that those guys had not thought about it, but, you know, maybe sometime in early spring, you know, if he's still running next year. Uh, they, well, they got to get him somewhere close to South Carolina. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't know I know they don't leave. Don't know. It's it's a 12 year, 12 month job. You know that in, in Clemson yeah. and Bama and these places. But you right. know, I, I really liked it, uh, you know, because we always had fun covering horse racing. And I really appreciate the people that enjoy their horses and, and, and you, it shows, uh, when, yes. they, when they win a race, they're excited. Like, you know, I like a coach that's excited when he wins a game. Uh, and I like fans that are excited, and I like people that are excited about it. And sometimes horse racing, you know, it's it's a little almost uh, church like. It's a little little golf clap like sometimes. Sometimes, yes, sometimes. You know, you have to really. I love being around people, whether it's coaches, horse owners, trainers, whatever, that really appreciate a win because they appreciate all the hard work and sacrifice that has gone into preparing mm -hmm. for that win. And you know, being involved in sports, there are some people that sort of, they have won so much that it, it kind of <laughs> doesn't mean as much to them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Um, you could definitely use just some fresh, exciting uh, blood coming in, which I think the sport of racing is doing a great job with America's Best Racing and with all the young folks that yeah. they have brought on board and some of their marketing campaigns and just some of their promotions and the things that they're doing, they've really done a phenomenal job in getting young people to the track. And I got to tell you, at, at, I'm sure you noticed this at, at this year's uh, Belmont Stakes. I could not believe the thousands and thousands and thousands of young people, like yeah. 20 something year olds that I saw pouring into the track. Yeah. It was, it was nice to awesome. see. And that's yes. what the sports needs. You know, that's the future. Yes. And that's what you see at Keeneland, as you know, you live there. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 nicely dressed young people out for an afternoon, having a great time, you know, having a couple of cocktails, placing some wagers, having fun with friends. And that's what racing should be all about. And, you know, I, I like the the syndication way it's going now. I mean, I, th I think partnerships, much more partnerships than individual owners out there. And it does oh, open yes. the door for more people to put up money that, Let's say they can afford to lose because truly, if you're going to buy a horse, you got to put up money you can afford to lose. Exactly. And, exactly. Uh, and, you know, so you can say, I can get in with the group, maybe 40 in the group, but I can get in with that group and go and I'm a part owner and I can have fun and say, look, there's my horse. Yeah, you're, you're spreading the risk. You know, you're, you're lessening your investment, but you're not lessening the enjoyment that you would get out of it. Um, so it's sort of a win win situation. And, uh, I mean, I guess one of the first 
people ever to to do these syndications. Wasn't that Cot Campbell with Dogwood? Cot Campbell was one mistaken? of the first I remember, Janine. I met him at the Keeneland sale like 1982, 83, somewhere in that area with Dogwood okay. Stable. Yeah. And then, you know, so many guys are doing it now. Uh, right. And, and, West Point and all yeah, these guys yeah. doing it, starlight racing, doing a great <laughs> job. But yeah, you're right. That that if that's what it takes to bring more people into the sport, I say that's a that's a smart thing. And it's a wonderful, wonderful way to get more people involved. And of course, you knew this. I mean, you were a trainer and a and, a, you know, you, you rode horses and, you know, you didn't just step in front of the TV camera one day. You came in with the a lot of credentials. So, you know, you've seen horse racing uh, from the ground up. Yeah, yeah. My background was in racing for many years. And, uh, I, and you know, I, I like to brag now that I worked for Mark Cassie because now Mark is just <laughs> really at the forefront of, of the sport. And, and congratulations to him. He's doing a phenomenal job. But I learned a lot from Mark. I galloped for him. I was an assistant trainer for him. Um, and just... It, it always helps when you have a little bit of background in the sport that you're covering. And that's why basketball, especially for me, was difficult because it's not a sport that I ever grew up watching and had really no knowledge of. So that was a learning curve when I started covering basketball. But uh, Sadly, you had to watch the New York Knicks for years, so you didn't really get to see <laughs> basketball. Oh, geez. And I, and, and I, lo and I remember oh the God. Willis Reed and oh, Dave DeBusher, man. Walt Frazier. I remember those guys, you know. Gosh, and now, and 40 years later, nothing's changed. <laughs> no, you know, then, you know, what a gap. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Poor Knicks. Poor yeah. Knicks. But you did. Wow. Like you say, you brought that in. And, and I always liked the insight that you brought. And, you know, and, you know, Caton and Charlesy and the other, the, the other people oh, I was gosh. fortunate to work yeah. with that could slide something in. And, uh, you know, you, you, oh, you can only get that. Best. Yeah, you can only get that from experience. Only yes, exactly. And Caton, of course, <laughs> is one of the best in the business right now, and has been for a long time. Charlsey was my idol yeah. when I was younger, watching her on television. I wanted to be Charlsey Canty. Um, and just you know, there are a lot of phenomenal, knowledgeable women who do a great job, like Brittany Erton that you work yeah. with on NBC. Tremendous people that are uh, great advocates for the sport. And Janine Edwards opened the door for some of that generation coming up. Look at you. Oh, you're sweet. You're yeah. sweet. Well, thank no. thank you for being on. I want you to come back sometime. I would love to come we'll, back. We'll get Glenn on, and I want to find out what he thinks about your interviewing <laughs> skills while you second-guess wanted... his coaching. And ask him what he, what he thinks about getting those text messages after the game when he I'm sees that his to. wife is texting him at halftime. <laughs> oh, geez. Not good. By the way, for anybody that's listening, he doesn't look at his phone during games. So I know that. It's all for naught. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good luck at the game this weekend. Thank you, Kenny. And, hey, if I don't talk to you, have a wonderful time at the Breeders' Cup. All Enjoy. Right. Thank good you so much. All. Thank you so much, Janine Edwards. Dear friend, we worked years together at ESPN. And we'll be back with more of the Horse Racing Show right after this.